Hello everyone, I'm Dennis Wang. Today, let's play with Hitri Rocket One, a top-down resin printer. Top-down resin printer is nothing new. There were already some top-down desktop resin printers since like 7 to 8 years ago, like Octave R1, Milkshake 3D, and until present days, they mostly exist on large format resin printer. On top-down printer, there is no release film or FBP, so no peeling force issue, which means you can print with minimum sports. Also, no worry about puncture FEP and resin leak. But it has issue with surface tension and it can cause blooming or thicker layer height than your set layer height. Therefore, most top-down printer has the auto blade or leveling wiper to level the surface to the desired layer height. Another issue with top-down printer is vibration. A light tap on the table can shake the resin surface, so make sure your table is very stable. Interesting fact, some of the top-down large format resin printer even has granite stone at the bottom as damper. But as long as you are careful near the printer, it won't be an issue. Rocket One has a beautiful design for top-down printer. The top chrome plastic cover with the exhaust fan underneath, black color plastic casing, and white neoprene fabric covering the side with side glow or side emitting fiber optic. I like that the USB port and the power button are at the front. Looking at the print area, this lens here is not DLP. Many people thought it is DLP, but in fact it is UV array with LCD and lens for focusing. Now this is confusing because he tried claim no screen. And thank you Ettore Mariabar for informing me about this and sorry if I mispronounce your name. The build plate here has magnet underneath to attach it to the build arm. It's kind of sad using this tweezer to remove the plate. Imagine if your plate is full. There should be a handle to better hold the plate. And most important part of top down printer is adjustable fit. I'm skipping the dial indicator test because I cannot find any place to attach it. I will rely solely on the stability torture test. The light source is not very uniform, the value ranging from 5 to 8 milliwatts per square centimeter, and the door cover is not fully blocked UV light, so you might want to be careful with your ambient light. You could use filler to save the amount of resin you need to fill the tank, but if you use filler, getting the resin out of the tank to switch resin is a hell of a work. You can watch my suffering when I try to switch resin. Unlike he tried tutorial video where they use clear tank, the UV can cure the resin into a single block and easily remove from the tank. In reality, the black tank they provide block UV from all sides, which means you can only cure from the top for like maximum 0.5mm thick, because the cured resin block UV from penetrates deeper. And yeah, like in my video, I have to repeat the messy process and then scoop out the goo with this resin filter. So, to use or not to use filler, the choice is yours. I read in some comments, user having difficulties with this printer. Some even said it is a dot printer. Initially, I am having difficulties with this printer too, so I want to share my troubleshooting after non-stop calibrating and testing for 2 weeks. If you like what you watched so far, kindly like this video, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to support my channel directly, you can check my pattern link in video description. I would suggest to level your printer with the build plate as indicator because the resin tank itself might not level. You can see the back of my tank, the resin is lower than the front edge, but the resin is level on the plate. And if I level it by the tank like in dry video, then my plate won't be level at all. And I lower the plate until there is a thin flat layer of resin on the plate and set it as my new zero height. The benefit of this leveling and the new zero height is easy removal from the plate. Pay attention to the back switch and your resin profile. Make sure the switch is at the same settings with your resin profile. I think a lot of people miss this switch at the back here. If you use third party resin with this power switch, this adds extra factor that you need to test when calibrating the resin exposure. If you want to use third-party resin, make sure it has very low viscosity, both with or without filler, because surface tension is your nemesis here. If you want to use filler, do a cup test first. So in my test here, I am using gray 4K resin because it has lower viscosity compared to gray 8K. 
And on my cup test with filler, the gray 8K resin get mixed with the filler after the second mixing test and won't cure properly. Gray 4K and heat dry resin cured very well even after the second vigorous mixing. Last thing for troubleshoot if you're having hard time to use this printer, don't print flat or use flat orientation due to surface tension. Minimize your support bottom contact with the plate. On bottom-up printer, we have the FEP and screen that help keep things flat when printing. And on most top-down printer, they have wiper to help level the surface to minimize blooming from surface tension. On this printer, no wiper. The full layer projection created heat and the shrinkage and the surface tension causing the exposed layer to shrivel or curl up and your print fail. So I test this bottom connect raft type on Cheetah Box and it print well, no detach at all because the raft type is very thin, has minimal surface area which means less shrivel or curling. On this film print, I noticed the support tip are all seem smaller than usual. It is supposed to be 0.4 mm tip size. So my guess is it is undersized due to the short exposure. I use 50 micron and 1.3 second exposure according to the default profile provided by Hitry. But if I raise the exposure, it will be overexposed and could cause the print to be blooming up due to the surface tension. So the most logical move is to use bigger support tip. So I use my Big Daddy support tip size 0.6 millimeter. And the result is success print. But I was so excited and I didn't do a proper cleaning causing it to crack. But it is not perfect because the small switch is missing. So I was thinking to raise the exposure for the small switch can be print. But when I post the image of this print, most of you comment it is overexposed. So I try it at 1.2 seconds and the result is fail print. I guess this is the limit. I cannot go lower and I can't raise the exposure. So I try to give it more angle. There is slight improvement to the print result from the number around this river 6. They seems a bit sharper than before but overall still looks overexposed. Then I try to print at 3 microns, support tip size still using Big Daddy 0.6 millimeter. High angle at 0.9 seconds, it fails. At 1 second, success. The result is much better compared to the 50 micron but still looks like overexposed. On stability torture test, I see some wavy pattern facing x-axis but I cannot feel it when I run my finger across the surface. And for this harsh line here, it is a shift line. I think it happened because I opened the door during printing when I want to record it. Then I move on to primer the red panda at 3 micron 1 second. The facial fur details are nice and quite sharp, but the shield fail. I raise it to 1.3 seconds, the shield still has some fail and the facial fur details become softer. I don't think raising the exposure again so the shield can be printed is not a good option, so it is what it is. The wire mesh model, none of the meshes are printed, only the tight shaft. I also test this grid type raft. As you can see, the clear effect of the surface tension from the wavy surface here. But at least this can be alternative option for the raft type that you can use. The letter model here, the detail edge are not sharp and the letter at the top are not readable. I won't even talk about the small letter at the back here. The most exciting model is this head sculpt model. I successfully printed with only one support. Actually, when I use Big Daddy support, when the print finish and emerge from the resin, the support break right away, but it is a success print. So on this print, I use 1mm support tip and 2mm shaft for visual purpose. But the facial details are soft. And the last print is this bigger steering wheel, almost full X and Y build size of the printer. Printed at 50 micron, 1.3 seconds. The numbers on the screen part here looking good, but the number around the buttons are very soft. Looks like the surface tension making issue at these buttons, causing them to be elongated. But at least the switch is printed this time. For untilizing, it works perfectly for this printer. For the dimension, it is slightly oversized on both axes. I think it is a very bold move from Pitry to make top-down printer without auto blade or wiper.
but I'm sure cost is the main factor because after all, it is a budget printer. So what do you guys think about this printer? Let me know in the comment section. I hope the troubleshooting can be helpful to those in need. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video. Thank you Benny too, Gary Heaven, and Waruna Willigamage. I hope I pronounced it correctly for becoming my patron.